Hey guys, what's up and uh, welcome back uh, with another video tutorial. Uh, so today I'm going to be going over uh, another ANSYS Workbench tutorial uh, and this time I'm going to be doing a, a simply supported beam with a, a distributed load. So this is just a photo that I took uh, as an example. So at point A we have a fixed support and on the point B we have roller support so it allows movement in the X direction. Um, but fixes the uh, movement in the Y. And Q here is a uniformly distributed load uh, across the beam. So for this example, um, I'm going to uh, use a beam length of one meter, so uh, 1,000 millimeters. Uh, my beam load uh, I'm using is uh, five newtons per millimeter. And young modulus, we're just going to use steel in this case, so uh, 210 uh, gigapascals, uh, or, or in this case, in, in newtons per millimeter squared, just to keep units. And the section that I'm going to be using is um, uh, 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters. Uh, all these values are just arbitrary. Uh, you can really you can use whatever you want, but just just for the sake of the example. So here, uh, C is actually the distance from the central neutral axis to the edge. So that's going to be half of the 40 millimeters, so 20 millimeters in this case. And the moment of inertia is going to be calculated using this formula for a square cross section, and the section modulus Z using this formula here. So. Let's begin. So we're going to open uh, ANSYS Workbench and we're going to drop in a, a static structural analysis. And here we can rename this to uh, Simply Supported Beam. Uh, next, you want to make sure that you file, you save it, your project. So just save as. I already saved it, so I'm just going to hit save now. We're going to first open Engineering Data and just to check out the property so in my case I specified uh, 210 uh, for the Young's modulus so the only thing that we're going to change in the engineering data here is this Young's modulus uh, so I'm going to put this in megapascals so instead of 200 we're just going to put 210 and we're going to keep the Poisson ratio uh, and the rest of the parameters default so then we're going to go back to our project now that we have our engineering data done, we're going to go ahead and uh, double click on geometry. And in this case, we're going to be doing a 3D uh, geometry. You could actually uh, simplify this uh, problem using a line body, but in this case, I'm going to be doing the full 3D model. So go ahead and click on XY plane and then uh, do uh, look at. So this basically makes you normal to the XY plane. And then click on the sketching tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a snap to grid in this case. So if you go into settings, grid, check uh, snap and uh, show in 2D. And uh, actually I forgot to mention we're going to uh, change the units to millimeters. So once you have that done, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, go hit draw, rectangle. And we want it to be, uh, what do we say, uh, 40 by 40. So we're going to go ahead and snap it like that. So there we go. We have 40 millimeters across, 40 millimeters high. So that's going to be our section. Then we're going to go back to modeling. And then we're going to go ahead and click on our sketch and then go extrude. And then we're going to, we already have the uh, sketch selected and we're going to go hit apply. We want to add material. And here for the depth, we're going to put uh, 1000. So we're going to extrude it one a thousand millimeters and go ahead and click generate. Now as you can see we have our beam. So once that's done uh, we can go ahead and either close or minimize it and now we're gonna go ahead and launch modeler. So we're gonna double click on model which will start the uh, mechanical interface. Now once in the mechanical interface uh, we're gonna leave the geometry default the mesh, uh, we're just going to change the sizing to uh, element size, we're going to put 20 millimeters. We'll right click on that and hit generate mesh. So that's going to give you a very a coarse mesh, um, but we can actually, uh, we're going to actually improve the mesh later on. 
So uh, now we're going to go and apply our boundary conditions. So under static structural, right click insert, and we're going to insert a fixed support. Now by default we have a face select, but we want to choose the edge, so click on edge, and then choose this bottom edge here and hit apply. So we're going to fix this end, and now for the other end, we're going to rotate around, we're going to right click static structural, insert, displacement, and then we're going to click on this bottom edge here, oops, this edge here, hit apply. And now in order to simulate the uh, s simply supported, uh, we want to only fix it in the Y. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and choose the Y here instead of free, click on the arrow and hit constant. So zero means that we're fixing the movement in the Y direction. And actually we also don't want movement in X direction as well because we're in 3D space here. So we're going to go ahead and fix the X as well. So it's only free to move in the Z which is so fixed in, fixed in all directions here and only free in the Z in this case which is also allowed to rotate which is what we want then we're gonna go ahead and add our uh, force so right click force so we're gonna add it to the face so we're gonna go face select choose the top face hit apply and then in the magnitude we're gonna put 5000 newtons and by default the arrow is actually facing the wrong way so we're gonna click to change the direction and click on the arrow here and then click apply. So now it's pointing in the negative y direction. You could have also actually just hit negative 5000 and it would have done the same thing. So that's going to be our load because in this case uh, 5000, yes that's correct. So 5000 newtons and next what we're going to do is we're going to go and get some of, uh, we're going to actually, we're going to insert uh, stress results. Uh, we're going to start with the directional deformation so we want it we're only really curious in the de the deformation in the y direction so we're going to use directional and not total and we're going to choose in the y axis next we're going to insert a uh, equivalent stress to find out the, the maximum stress and what we're going to do here is we're going to insert a convergence plot um, this will basically uh, basically give me accuracy to whatever percent I want so if I want 1% change I'm gonna put I want the stress to be 1% so what it's gonna do is gonna actually run the simulation a couple of times until it gets one uh, a change in the stress from the previous run to the second run of 1% so we're gonna go in solution uh, sorry solution and we're gonna go hit uh, max refinement loops we'll put that to 3 so go ahead and solve right click on solution solve and we'll wait a few seconds and still processing you can see it in solution information so then here so then we have our results so as you can see here we have a directional deformation in the y of minus 1.4 millimeters that's the maximum and as we expect the edges are zero so they're, ha they're, they're basically not moving and for the stress we have a stress of 58 megapascals that's again if your units are not correct you can set them here so so that's the the analysis of convergence plot shows us that the first run calculated 58.6 and the second run 58.6 so our mesh was actually um, was was not a bad default mesh but as you can see now in the solution if we show mesh in this you can click on this drop down show elements you can see that the uh, solver automatically refined the areas uh, for the convergence model so that just gives you a bit more accurate results so there we have it and now to compare our results uh, we have here 1.46 as a maximum so we can go here and click our ma uh, sorry not max minimum so that's the that's where the minimum is located of 1.4 millimeters and if we go ahead and look at our uh, hand calculations we can go ahead and see here that the maximum displacement with these parameters is 1.45 that's the W max uh, and so we calculated 1.46 so we're, we're, we're fairly we're, we're on the we're on the spot here and if we go ahead and check out the stress 
we can we're interested in the maximum stress and the maximum stress in this case is located on the bottom face but it's probably uh, the same thing or similar on the top face of 58 uh, megapascals. We can go ahead and check our hand calculations once again using these formulas we can see that our sigma max is uh, 58.59 uh, using these parameters. So our FEA results uh, basically it basically shows that it compares with the uh, analytical uh, ca hand calculation results. So, so everything is working fine. And now I just basically want to uh, go over uh, maybe a few more uh, tips with you. So uh, in this case, uh, we can also, I just want to show you how to use a section cut. So if you want to see across the, um, your model here, you can go ahead and click on uh, this button here, which is new section plane and you can slice up your model let's say across the middle here draw a line and then let go and then as you can see uh, you can basically see the, uh, the, s the stress distribution along the inside of the, uh, the model you can also go ahead and click on probe and probe will basically give you the stress at an exact point so if I click here it's uh, 30 on the surface here 58 and you'd expect, you see here the blue, which is the neutral axis, and the neutral axis is always usually uh, around zero, as you'd expect. So that's, uh, that's just a quick overview on section cuts. Now to disable the section cut, uh, you can just uncheck it, or you can click on it and click on delete. And to delete the, uh, the probes, you can go ahead and click on the probe selector, and click on the probe here and press the delete key on your keyboard. Now, uh, another thing that I wanted to show um, was uh, was basically uh, report generation and also maybe some path generation. So what we could do is uh, you can go ahead into model, right click, insert construction geometry, and then right click construction geometry, insert path. And then here we're going to click on the edge selector and we're going to click on this edge and hit apply. And then we're going to scroll down here for the end and click on this edge and click apply. And uh, so now we have a path from the center of this to the edge of that. And now what we're going to do is, let's say we're curious to see um, what the, st what the uh, deformation is along this line. I mean, here we have the, the total deformation of the whole model, but let's say we're just curious along the surface on the top. So we create this path here. Then in solution, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, actually duplicate this directional deformation. So duplicate without results. And then instead of uh, geometry selection, we're going to go ahead and choose path. And then under the path, we're going to choose the path that we want. And then we're basically, again, we want the Y. So we can right click and go evaluate all results. And there you have it. So now you have the uh, deflection on the top of the, uh, of the beam. And if you wanted to do the same thing for, let's say, the stress, uh, you can go ahead and insert, uh, you can duplicate again without results. We're going to just delete this convergence plot because we don't want to redo the convergence plot. And we're going to go path and then choose the path and then evaluate results. And there you go. Now you have a stress plot along the top surface of the beam. So at this point here it's zero, at here it uh, reaches maximum and then zero again, which is what you would expect. And uh, let's say you wanted to uh, add this plot to your report. Uh, you can go ahead and click on this button here which is the new chart and then it just adds the chart here you can rename it to whatever you want by hitting rename and we can call it uh, stress top surface and there we have our stress top surface plot and let's say we wanted to see the uh, stress uh, at the neutral axis which is supposed to be zero we can go ahead and once again duplicate the stress results. Oh, sorry, we're going to have to actually change our path. So we're going we're gonna to click on path. We're going to duplicate the path. And we're going to make a new path that's at the origin. So the Y we want 0. And then the end, 0. So this is a path that runs along the center of the beam. So now we're going to use this one. This is called path 2. Uh, you, can, you can, again, you can rename these paths by right-clicking and renaming to have something more meaningful. And then, so this for this stress result, we're going to use path two, and we're going to solve. And then, as you can see, the uh, at the edges, it's about five megapascals, and then when it reaches the middle of the beam, it hits zero pretty much, 
and then again it goes up to maybe like five. So in theory, uh, the neutral axis is zero all the way, but in FEA we can see that uh, because due to the support and the and the load on this end, there's actually a bit of compression going on here, and so uh, it causes a bit more stress at the edges. So this is actually more accurate. So that's again your your that's so that's the neutral axis plot. So if you do if you did a uh, as you can see here it's all blue, and what you could do is you can also do um, a uh, normal stress result to get just the direction that you want and in this case we want the Y and then, oh, sorry, not the Y so Z so normal, uh, so along the Z axis, so this is uh, this is just the stress uh, along the uh, along the normal Z plane so the normal is this way, so it's the stress along these two axes here, the, the x, y. So as you can see here, it's minus, so you get the compression and tension. Uh, with the equivalent stress, you don't, you, you don't really, you don't see that, you just see the maximums and the minimums, but with the normal stress, here you get, the, you get that the top surface is under compression of minus 58, and the bottom is under tension of, my, of 58 megapascals. And so let's say you wanted to add this image to your uh, report, you can just nicely image this uh, and then click on this button here and go figure and then there you go you can rename uh, this thing to normal stress and then there you have your normal stress image that will be uh, inputted into the report and also if you wanted to check let's say the undeformed wireframe you can go ahead and choose that there here in this button here so you can have the undeformed model and the deformed model and let's say you wanted to animate this, you can go into uh, this button here, click play, and it will also animate the, uh, the deflection of the beam. Uh, from zero to one, and one means basically full load. So that's the ramp that we added here. So zero is zero force, and one is the 5,000 Newtons. So that's basically the, uh, the animated stress plots. You can just here make an animation, you can even save the animation. So once you have your charts and your images, and uh, you can actually, you might want to add an image of this here. So we're just going to go hit a figure, and then that's going to be our, uh, we can just rename this to boundary conditions. So now we have an image of our boundary conditions. We have just an image of our uh, normal stress. We can also add an image of our, um, of the equivalent stress. So we have an image there, an image there, we have an, a, a chart of a top surface. I think we're okay. And then the geometry, uh, we can also uh, input it uh, by default. We can have an image of our mesh. We can do that. And then we can go ahead and click on Report Preview right here. So ANSYS will automatically go through everything and generate a report for you. So you can go here, and as you can see here, you have the uh, ANSYS release number. There's, your, uh, there's the beam. And then here are all the details. There's the, the mesh uh, image. And then here is our loading. So from 0 to 5,000 Newtons. This is the image that we did for, we called boundary conditions. So it added the boundary conditions image. So here we have a fixed displacement. Uh, here we have a, uh, a simply supported uh, uh, end condition. And we have C, which is our force of 5,000 Newtons. And then you can keep going. And then here we have our image that we added called equivalent stress. And then here we have our directional deformation uh, chart that we added. And there you go. So this is the other chart that we added and another figure that we added, stress top surface. And that's it. So you have this report here. And then once you're done with that, uh, you can go ahead and hit publish and you can print your report. So uh, I hope this was a helpful tutorial at getting started with uh, ANSYS. And uh, if you liked it, uh, please uh, subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section below. Thanks. See you later.